Okay. Good morning, everyone. And welcome to our weekly board session. It's Wednesday, June 15th, 2022. It's 9 o'clock, and we are here in the Center Hearing Room at 555 Court Street, Northeast in Salem. As always, we start with the Pledge of Allegiance, so if you please join me. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, we don't have anybody signed up for public comment this morning, so we're going to go right to our first presentation, and that's a Travel Salem Quarterly Update. Come on up, Kelly. Good morning, Commissioners. My name is Kelly Weiss. I'm the Economic Development Coordinator here in our Community Services Department at Marion County. This morning, we're hosting Travel Salem, who's going to be providing their quarterly report on their work towards tourism promotion for our county. On July 1st, we're going to be entering in the final year of our five-year agreement with Travel Salem, which allocates $125,000 each fiscal year from our Economic Development Program for Travel Salem to perform tourism marketing promotion for the county. This contract is set to expire, just for reference, at June 30th, yes, June 30th, 2023. So with that quick introduction, I'd love to turn it over to Angie Onuchi, the President and CEO of Travel Salem, who will be presenting their quarterly report. Good morning. Can you hear me okay? I was told I had to get really close to the mic. So good morning. I'm Angie. Uh, so nice to see both of you this morning. Um, and I am really excited to talk about what happened in the third quarter. I have a very limited time, so I'm going to hopefully count on the fact that you guys have had a chance to look at the report, but I will call your attention to the first page of the report where we have key performance measurements. You're going to see activity there July through March in that first column. Um, and um, the column next to it, percentage of target, you're going to see huge increases. Uh, that's really good news. That means things are returning. Um, things are very healthy. Um, our estimated economic impact is up 210%. Now, prior to COVID, it was at $638 million in 2019. Um, and you can see that in now it's 676. So we're over where we were even pre-COVID. The market is booming. Our TOT tax, the Salem TOT tax will um, go over $4 million this year. Um, our leverage is, is doing great. Consumer engagement is 130 million consumer engagements this year so far. That's through nine months of the year. Um, our visitor information network has served almost 113,000 folks. Um, our earned media impressions are almost at 75 million. Um, so really, really strong performance this year. Um, I hope you've had a chance to look at the report. As I mentioned, there's some really great highlights in here around our marketing and communications some of the advertising that we're running up in the Seattle market. We're online with Expedia. We're doing a Sojourn campaign. Sojourn basically tracks a consumer from the point of considering or inspiration of your market to all the way through to purchase, um, which is a really exciting um, campaign. And we can track airfare, flights that are being booked into Portland and folks renting cars coming down into Salem. Um, hopefully that won't be um, an issue going forward when we can have our own commercial air service here. Um, I'm going to draw your attention to the slide presentation I have um, in front of you. So a few things I want to talk about in terms of Marion County. So we've been working um, on uh, and, and want to coordinate with you more closely on the Rails to Trails funding, which is really the Opal Creek Wilderness um, funding, the $2 million on trails that will be developed. And we want to partner with you and how we can help in any way. So we'll be connecting with Kelly closely on that. If there's any other suggestions on how you'd like us to engage, please let me know. Um, our Resilient Headwaters group, uh, we've been connecting with a, f a person named Gabe Tiller. He's the founder of the Oregon Timber Trail Alliance, and he's the current lead on this project um, that will connect the canyon communities uh, via a shared multi-use trail. Um, the funding for that contract with him ends in June, and so we're waiting to hear um, who will be his replacement. Um, the next phase of the project includes seeking additional funding, $150,000 for project. Um, that could come from the state, federal, or tourism agency, possibly. Um, they're using one trail as a pilot that will then transition to a 10-year plan. So that's a lot of really exciting movement there. Our board member, Dino Venti, is serving as our liaison with this group. 
North Murray County Tourism, quick update there, Woodburn um, has created a destination marketing organization that includes Woodburn, St. Paul, Aurora, Angel, Mount Angel, and Silverton and Brooks. And um, they're ex creating an Explore North Marion website and they've purchased, purchased some computerized information kiosks to be used throughout the area. Um, so we're coordinating and partnering with them on that. Um, they're looking at Main Street development, transportation between communities and wine country, and land, land use issues regarding overnight accommodations. So we're partnering with them. Um, I want to thank the county again. Uh, we recognized your work and many of the cities in mm -hmm. um, uh, the county that were devastated by the wildfires. We gave an award to the group, our most resilient award at our most Oregon part of Oregon industry awards. And um, it was a pretty emotional event. And I really want to thank Commissioner um, uh, Bethel for being there and accepting the award on behalf of the county. We also recognized uh, the mayor of Gates, the mayor of Mill City, and mayor of Detroit. Um, so we thanked them for coming as well and all of their hard work in their communities. Iron Man is coming. It'll be here in July, so less than 30 days, July 10th to be exact. Um, the event sold out months and months ago, um, 1,200 more athletes than we had in the prior year. Uh, this event is now one of the largest um, events in the Ironman portfolio, believe it or not. So we're expecting about 10,000 plus spectators to come to view this event. Um, so we've got a lot of um, new things that we're doing this year. Um, and you'll see us travel Sam down on the streets on, with some umbrella tents uh, to serve visitors and help get them around the community. On the public relations side, um, we have secured um, over 18 million impressions in the third quarter. The highlights are in the report that you have um, in front of you. Um, there was some specific coverage for Marion County assets, so we had some coverage in travelawaits.com that covered uh, Silverton, the Oregon Garden, the Gordon House. We got some coverage in religionunplugged.com where they were looking at a drink from this Benedictine brewery will have you thanking God for beer, and isn't that true? Um, and then Spring and Bloom from Travel Oregon featuring the Oregon Garden. On the social media side, we had some great exposure as well. We published more than 50 social media posts um, that included or featured Marion County specifically. Um, more than 600,000 impressions alone in the third quarter from that social media engagement. You can see how these posts here performed, um, one featuring the Gallon House Bridge in Silverton and the Staten Jordan Covered Bridge as well, Wooden Shoe <coughs> Tulip Festival and the Smith Creek Village's cabins at Silver Falls State Park. Um, let's see. This slide talks about our three blogs that we had um, published in the third quarter. Um, and you can see the different Marion County assets that were published in each of those, January, February, and March. And so a lot of great coverage for the county. There was an additional handout that I asked to be given to you, and it's just on a sheet like this. And it lists um, a lot of different smaller community um, social media posts that we were able to do the, during the, uh, basically from July through uh, March, the third quarter. So we featured Enchanted Forest, uh, Detroit's Fishing Tournament, St. Paul, um, the Rhododendron Garden there, Brooks um, Gardens and Peonies, Aurora Colony Vi Vineyards, Mount An Angel Benedictine Brewery, um, a lot of different um, businesses there in Woodburn, the Willamette National Forest, the Pamelia Lake, uh, Silverton, a variety of different assets there, Jervis, Jefferson, and Mount Jefferson Wilderness. So a lot of wonderful content being pushed out there. Um, I'd like to end my presentation and then take some questions, but I'd like to share with you, oh, quickly, I'm sorry, we have contracted with Cascara Films um, to produce five, min five two-minute video features on unique attractions throughout the region. And so all of these here are in Marion County, um, except for the Chachula uh, Museum, which is in Polk County. And so we have done the filming in April, and um, we're getting ready to produce those and push those out. So a lot of great content there. But this is what I wanted to share with you today as I end my presentation to you. Here at Don Bigote, we make crepes, churros, shakes. We invent some uh, energy drizzles. We do a lot, of, a lot of sweets. I used to be a photographer, and then some friend invited me 
to do a rodeo. So um, I bought some equipment, a couple grills, and I started doing tacos and rodeos, Mexican rodeos. And uh, the first day that we start, we make some money. And right after that, we just uh, keep doing rodeos, start doing fairs, all over the place. We travel, there's no more fairs in September, uh, all the way to February. We want to do something because we didn't do nothing in those months. So that's how we come up with Don Bigote. So for the winter, we start doing churros, slow grapes, and all that. And uh, only for winter, but you know what? It was a hit. So now we have it all year round. People want to see like Cookie Monster. They see the eyes, they see. It's, it's not like you eating a crepe. You're eating something else. You, I see kids smiling. And that is what we like. See kids smiling when they eat the churros. They love to see the shapes with the churro. So, you know, we love to do like fun stuff, not just regular stuff. Everything we do, we're trying to do like different. People should visit me because they're gonna see something different. They're not gonna see the same stuff. But you know, this stuff is really good. If you come and you see this, this video, I will give you a free churro if you tell me if you see this interview. <laughs> so I give you a free churro if you tell me. So you can taste them, you know? My name is Oscar Cruz Rodriguez. And my restaurant calls Don Bigote. And it's located at 3260 Portland Road, Northeast, Salem, Oregon, 97301. So I don't think it's just the kids that are having smiles <laughs> after they're eating their desserts. Um, but one thing I want to point out about that video. Mr. Chair. Um, it's mm -hmm. about. Mr. Chair, can oh, I interrupt? Can please. we recess and go up to Portland Road? <laughs> I, I know, right? We might get in trouble, but it's worth it. Yeah. Yeah. I know, right? A couple of things about the production of that video. So it's, it's about developing character of place. There's a ton of food carts all over the world, right? But this is about him and, and the experience that he's creating for consumers. And so we really need to bring out his personality. You saw the subtitles there, which are not just because of, of his accent and possibly folks not maybe understanding him, but because we want people to be able to watch the video when they can't use sound so they can read along and so forth as well. So there's a lot of, it's about accessibility to that content. Um, so anyway, really excited to share that with you and I'd be happy to answer any questions or talk about anything else you'd like to discuss today. Thank you, Angie. Any questions? Um, I don't know that I have any questions other than Angie, if if we had to lower the river level today, we would be in real doo-doo. So I hope, um, last year we had to call Army Corps to get the river level lowered for the Ironman. So I hope we uh, get some sunny and um, less rainy weather between now and, what's the date? July? July 10th. 10th. Yeah. yeah, it's not too far away. Because mm -mm. um, the rivers, I, in fact, I uh, did a run through Riverfront Park last night over to West Salem and I looked at the river and it was like just muddy and stormy and so mm -hmm. keep our fingers crossed for yeah. that. Um, on the resilient headwaters, I just met um, yesterday or day before, what's today? Today's Wednesday, so maybe it was uh, two, Monday with uh, Gabe and uh, Dino and John Paul uh, in our parks department and it's really important that uh, we coordinate. Um, you made a comment about um, Gabe's replacement. What did you mean by that? Well, apparently his contract ends in June. Who's this his month. contract with? Gabe. Um, who he's contracted with? That I don't know. Okay. Do you know? I don't know specifically who he's contracted with, but the funding, the initial funding, from my understanding, was the guys up in June, and so they are looking at our next contract for that. Okay. So they have not, I don't think, appointed a new person yet to take over that work, um, but we're coordinating with I Gabe. didn't get the impression that they were looking for a new person. I got the impression they're looking for funding to continue. Just to continue the work itself. Uh -huh. That's okay. right. That was my impression. But we, what we're going to do is we're, uh, it wasn't a, I didn't leave that meeting about the funding, but what I did leave that meeting was the, the um, we're going to take initiative to convene more people that need to be in the room uh, U.S. Forest Service, um, you obviously, or not you, but Travel Salem, U.S. Forest Service, the State Forest, uh, Army Corps, all these people that are going to be a part of these trails, uh, BLM, 
is to try to make sure that we're all on the same page and and have a plan to to whatever they're, they, they're these guys are leading this thing yeah. it's it's what i want to say it's constituent driven grassroots driven but making sure that they get the resources at the table to to pull off this plan because we've taken a tour of the the rail the rail to trail portion of that and we're pretty excited about that the two million you mentioned up there i'm just not sure from what i've heard from jan is it's something about we have to match it we don't have, we don't we don't have, have two million dollars for a match yeah, I think and the, the state and the feds kind of screwed that one up yeah so we're still working on that one um that would be the quick answer is we're still working on on that on yeah how to either come up with a match or have the match requirement dropped or lowered or something because it was a one-to-one -one match is what i heard no they didn't they didn't when i mean when they first started talking about this there was no match they right. just said we're going to give you two million dollars out of and, the and then all of a sudden they showed up and said by the way you have to match it with two million dollars and that's it's not in our budget we don't we don't have that so that's not yeah. a thing they you know this is definitely a situation where somebody tried to some bureaucrat somewhere tried to pull something in. yeah i think they're trying to fit our project into an already existing program and its requirements is what all right anyway. well anyways we i just wanted to make it. sure you knew about that that kind of pushed back on us to say yeah because we were all ready to build a few bridges and go from gates up to uh yeah. the rest area and, and complete that first yeah. portion of the trail but but everything went on hold because of that news of matching so and there's nothing we can do other than just try to look for some other options can we be more i don't know how many advocate? reserves do you have two million in reserves <laughs> uh, they just need to drop it i mean they're not, they're not the agency's not required to, re to yeah. require a match mm -hmm. they chose to do that right mm -hmm. so they just need to stop i don't think they realize it was wildfire recovery money and all that stuff anyways just so you're aware of that one it's worth you. pursuing though to, to get that match dropped because that <clears throat> yeah. work is really important those that trail system what we have up there in that area is world-class cycling and i know you hear dino talk about that constantly right. um it's more i mean more spectacular than even like the mckenzie river and oak, oak ridge trails down in eugene and that's what they tout that region on so right. our product up here is spectacular and yeah really important to our recovery yeah. and long-term health. It's going to be important we stay focused on it, though. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks, Mr. Chair. Okay. Thank you, Angie. Okay, thank you. Thanks, Kelly. Yes, thank you. Uh, next up, we have the consent. <coughs> All right, Mr. Chair, I will move the consent calendar. First is uh, approve an order delegating authority to Danielle Bethel, Marion County Board of Commissioners Chair, to execute all the documents necessary to close the county's purchase of 9.42 acres of tax lot. I'm not gonna read the number. 3.35 uh, acres of tax lot and 1.53 acres of tax lot. Um, three different tax, four different, five different tax lots in Mill City, Oregon for the location of immediate housing solutions necess necessitated by the 2020 Santa Am Canyon wildfires. And Brenda, I'll assume you're going to put all those numbers in there because it's on the agenda. I just didn't want to read them all, the tax lots. But we're giving Danielle the authority to sign for those purchases. Okay. Do you want to go to the next one? Oh, yeah. They're all I guess this is consent, isn't consent. it? Yeah. Yeah, all right. Under finance, approve a quick claim deeds for the sale of two tax foreclosed properties for Marion County to grantees Harmander Carr at tax ID 534556 and Matthew D. Griffith tax ID 548041. Under finance, approve a quick claim deed for the sale and transfer of tax IDs 597968 and 597970 from Marion County to grantees Alejandro and Teresa Soto. Under Public Works, receive a notice of a hearings officer's decision approving the conditional use, case number 21-062, Allied Rock. Also under Public Works, receive notice of a hearings officer's decision conditional use, case number 22007, Daniel and Heather Loscaur. And under Public Works, receive a notice of a hearings officer decision approving zone change, case number 22-0033, 36th Street Property, LLC, 
And finally, under Public Works, accept an appeal of a hearings officer's decision, administrative rule, administrative review, case number 21-038, Joshua Fogarty, Fogarty, and schedule a public hearing for June 29, 2022. Okay, and I'll second the motion. We have a motion to second. Is there any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Motion passes. Okay. Next up, uh, we have Chris Epley. Good morning, Chris. <coughs> Good morning, commissioners. Chris Epley, uh, Community Development Division Director up in the board's office. And not related to my topic, but I'm going to also put a plug in for Don Bagotis. <laughs> <laughs> it's one of our favorite places in Salem to go for dessert as a family. So, um, Before you, for your consideration, is an intergovernmental agreement between Marion County uh, and the Oregon Department of Administrative Services, or DAS, for a grant of $900,000, which uh, encompasses uh, activities related to wildfire recovery um, through October of 2024, which is when this grant expires. Uh, the parent funding is American Rescue Plan Act funds, uh, coronavirus uh, re relief funds. And it is for two specific projects. One is for $300,000, and that is for provi uh, the provision of enhanced emergency medical services in the Upper Canyon, specifically to be uh, located out of the city of Detroit uh, for each of three recreational seasons starting last season, actually. So there's a reimbursement component associated with this. Uh, the provider of that service will be Lyons Fire District, Rural Fire District, and the reason for that is, is that they are the closest emergency medical services provider that has the ability to provide advanced life support, uh, level of service, and also to transport uh, to a hospital. And the second piece is for $600,000, and that is a street project identified for the city of Gates uh, on Central Street which is the beginnings of defining potentially a commercial district for the city of Gates. And the, that portion of this grant will be delivered and managed by uh, Mary County Public Works. And that's what I have for you. Great. Any questions? No. Okay, then I'll take a motion. Yeah, Mr. Chair, I'll move that we approve incoming funds in our government agreement with the Oregon Department of Administrative Services in the amount of 900000 for the Lions Fire Emergency Medical Enhancement Project estimated at 300000 in the Gates Downtown Improvement Project estimated at 600000 through October 1st, 2024. And I'll second the motion. We have a motion to second. Is there any further discussion? We're finally getting some uh, intergovernmental agreements out of DAS, huh? <laughs> I know. Yeah? It is. There we go. Hey, two years. It only took them two years. Right. We'll, we'll take what we yeah, can get. I know. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> All those in favor, signal highway. Aye. Aye. Motion passes. Thank you, commissioners. Thank you, Chris. Uh, next up, we have Colleen and Ryan. Morning, Commissioners. Colleen Kuhn, Chapin's Business Services Director. And Ryan Matthews, Health and Human Services Administrator. So today we're here to, uh, uh, one, we're interested in purchasing the piece of property uh, located at 1234 Commercial for the uh, Psychiatric Crisis Center. And I'm going to let uh, Ryan talk about that. Sure. Great. So we're really excited to be here today. So this is an, a need that we've identified for a few years. Uh, we've seen continued expansion and growth in our crisis response. Really, this comes out of needs we've identified in our community for more robust community-related response for those experiencing a mental health crisis, uh, for, for those um, dealing with substance use disorders, and also with our home, uh, unsheltered population. Uh, we've seen significant investments over the last several months from the state in terms of uh, bolstering our crisis program and our crisis services, and thankfully, uh, a portion of those funds can go towards infrastructure so it's really brought uh, it's really opened up the possibility for us to invest in something that could have a long-lasting impact by uh, allowing for the expansion of services through our crisis program uh, currently we we are located at the psychiatric crisis center on the grounds of the Salem Hospital 
Uh, it's, it's a very small space and it's something that we've outgrown over time. Uh, we currently have portions of our crisis program also stationed at Silverton Road just because we just did not have the space to have them all under one roof. Uh, we, while while they, the program has made that work as best that they could, that's just not the ideal way for this program to operate and for our resources. We want to have them centralized in one location and we want to have a community crisis center that has the capability of meeting the needs of our community. Uh, this this uh, building will house our full crisis program including the, the planned expansions related to um, addiction treatment services being available 24-7 in terms of our response. We'll have our lead program also stationed there. And we were really fortunate to find a clinic that was so close to the grounds of the hospital as well, so it'll allow us to continue our relationship with Salem Health. That's something we really, really value. That's a partnership that's been in this community for decades at this point and something we've grown together and we, we really want to maintain and, and continue to support them. So we're really excited that, we, that the funding has come at a time where we've also been able to find this resource that we think really meets our needs. And um, and, and we're presenting that for uh, your consideration today. Thank you, Ryan. Yeah. Any questions? Well, uh, no. It's good that we're getting this done. Yeah. That's pretty exciting. So, Colin, yeah. thank you for your team and pulling this together. And I know um, I see Terry back there. They've been doing inspections on the building. Yes, they have. Yeah. What we need to do. And uh, good team effort. Excited. When do we think we would actually um, – move what what would be the timing Ryan have you thought about that yet yeah we're, we're working on that part of it is we're going from 4200 square foot to over 10,000 square foot and so when you're looking at that we do need to do carpet and paint before everybody moves in so that's a big pur purchase there and then we have a reception area that needs to be uh, renovated in order to make the place safe for both clients and for the staff so those are two of the big things three <coughs> of the big things that we really need to get done Depending on contractors at this point in time, uh, Terry's already working on that as far as getting contractors bid. So we're working with the realtor and the owners to get in there sooner so we can get contractors in their bidding. Uh, but we're maybe thinking uh, September 1st, October 1st. Just really depends on that timing. Okay, thank you. I wanna say thank you both for your flexibility in this process too, because we were going down Maybe we were going to lease this building, and then the opportunity came to buy it, and the funding showed up, and you guys were really fast to uh, to make that happen. And um, especially with the real estate market the way it is right now. Mike Moser's been a great partner to work with at Moser Realty, and, and Alex Roten as well. Uh, they've both been great partners to work with. That's great. Yeah, so thank you for doing this, and I'm glad we're going to own this one. We're yeah. We're going to be yes. stuck on a lease, and we're going to get to control our own costs going forward. So. Yes. Yes, yeah, very exciting. And, and I just want to thank Colleen and her team. They, they are so responsive yeah. and they've just adapted throughout this process as we've had to go from, as you said, here's a lease, now here's an intent to bid, here's a, buy, a purchase, you know. So uh, th they're great to work with and, and really helping to make this become a reality for us. We're really thankful. Along with his place and everything else they're doing at the same time. It's, it's yeah. amazing. A uh, lot of projects. Great. A lot of projects. <laughs> That's good, but you're doing them well. Thank yeah. You. Thank you. Thank so, Mr. You. Chair, if you're ready, I will make a motion to approve the commercial real estate sale agreement in the amount of $2,400,000 for the purchase of property and buildings located at 1234 Commercial Street North or Southeast in Salem, Oregon for the Psychiatric Crisis Center. And I'll second the motion. We have a motion to second. Is there any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Motion passes. Thank you, Colin. Thank, uh, thank you, Ryan. Colleen, you're staying, I think. Yes. I Very am nice staying. One. Terry's coming up. Come on up. All right. I'm just backing him up. Oh, fair enough. Welcome, Terry. Good morning. Terry Stoner, Facilities Manager for Marion County. Um, I'm here to ask for the consideration of approval uh, for our purchase order for Garland. Uh, we have a capital improvement project uh, for the Marion County Public Works Building Number 1 roof, which is um, an original roof from the beginning, from, from the time of construction. It is um, seen its better days. It is leaking on a regular basis now when the rain comes, uh, we patch it as much as we can, uh, have contractors have come in and patched it for us, but it is time for it to be replaced. So we're asking that you uh, approve this 
Garland is a, has been a good uh, partner for us. They go out and do the same as what we would do is getting uh, quotes and, and uh, for the projects. They uh, do all, um, all contractors are local. And so they also, in doing this, they warranty all the roofing. So uh, everything, uh, labor, materials, is all warrantied for 30 years, uh, straight up. So in saying that, um, I'd just like to ask for your permission. This is needed, isn't it? This is needed, yes. Some buckets. The, some of the buckets. <laughs> some of the pictures, yes. One of the, one of the uh, other considerations when you own a building is you own, you own the maintenance as well. Don't you? This is true. Questions? Yeah, I was over there last week for a meeting, and uh, I just looked at that building, and it was kind of probably state-of-the-art when it was built, you know, the design and everything. But now, practically, you know, having that, it, 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 like, Star Wars building or something, the centerpiece of it is, like, so much square footage, and we're heating it. But we're, I know we got a long-term uh, issue over there. So uh, if you're ready, Mr. Chair, I'll go ahead and make a motion to approve the purchase order with Garland. DBS Inc. in the amount of $723,315 for the Marion County Public Works Building 1 Roof Replacement Project through uh, Omnia Partners Cooperative Contract with uh, through June 30th, 2023. I'll second the motion. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Motion passes. Okay. Uh, and looks like you're staying, and we're going to accept the closeout for a number of projects. Is that right? If I could note one thing about Garland before we go there is that every project we've done with them so far has been under budget. That's great. And on so, time. And on time. And so that, barring some of the uh, rain issues we've had, they've been worked around that, and we've, we've done great jobs. The jail is done. The uh, they, they just done the helped with the waterproofing or the marble cleaning over across the street as well so every project's come under budget so that's that's the good news here right that's wonderful thank you okay okay next So this is uh, required for us to uh, bring forward to you our uh, completed projects that were over $100,000. Um, typically, we would like to do this uh, more often during the year, but uh, we've kind of fallen uh, back on that. So this is going to cover the whole 21-22 uh, fiscal year. Um, we had five projects that we closed out and um, basically they are, they came to $2,383,766. Um, they included the jail pavement and water filtration uh, project, jail admin area fire sprinklers, and jail F and G re-roofing projects. So the jail, this is the waterproofing. We had a good project there. Everything went pr very smoothly for, for the most part. Uh, one of the things that we took away from it, though, is that we would uh, we want to pay closer attention to um, our customers' needs, especially when it comes to security uh, and the the impact it's going to have with them. Uh, once we got into it, we all, we we paved por parts of the jail uh, parking lot and driveways. Uh, in the process, we move the wash, the car wash, uh, place over by the the uh, 
gas tanks. Put up, as you can see, we put up a, a canopy. Um, but what we didn't know is that the jail needed to have intercom system included and cameras out there so that they could watch the AICs, uh, adults in custodies, um, wash the cars and keep track of them. So that came later, but even at that, we, we still came in under budget uh, and pretty close to on time. Um, it was a great improvement. Uh, the, the, where they were uh, doing the car washes before was just uh, not a good location. And uh, so this, this looks good and it, it does a good job. Next one for the jail was the fire sprinkler systems. Um, this one was, original budget was uh, $148,974. The actual cost was $138,518. Um, so we came under budget with this one. It went re really well also. Uh, Contractors uh, were good to work with. Uh, it went smoothly and it went quickly. We came in uh, uh, on time. And uh, again, the only thing that we really took away from this as far as improving on is uh, making sure that the, the general contractor that we hire uh, is connected with the subcontractors that they that they need. Uh, this one here, we needed them to work with the fire alarm company that we have, uh, needed to work with the elevator company, and they weren't, uh, they were not aware of having to do that, so we, it was kind of a, a work around there. Again, it's, it went smoothly though, and once we got things lined up, and um, it was, again, on time and under budget. And now the jail is completely uh, sprinkled for fire. Uh, next. Next is the jail, F and G <coughs> re-roofing. <coughs> that one again, that one we used garland on. They came in on time, under budget. Uh, they were good to work with. Uh, as they work, a lot of their work was done after hours, so that not to uh, not to interrupt courts. Um, so it was. It worked pretty smoothly. Uh, every time, if if they made some noise during the day to uh, to interrupt courts, the courts would call us and they would back off right away. So they were really good to work with. Again, they this is a roof that, as you can see, had rock on it. On the left is the old roof. Uh, they removed all the rock, replaced a bunch of insulation uh, that was uh, wet and then uh, put down the old roofing on the, on the end. So it was uh, a very good job. Uh, this one, uh, the original budget was $755,672. Actual cost was $752,806.89. So it came on under budget on that one also. And again, uh, with Garland, this is a 30 year parts and or materials and labor warranty. So uh, we're quite happy with it. There, there was no swimming up there, just so you know. I mean, <laughs> that's just ballasted roof, so that's what they call ballasted roof. There's no oh. swimming up there. <laughs> Good point. No waiting. So the next one is we go to the courthouse. Uh, the courthouse was a project that we uh, put together, a uh, capital improvement project for cleaning the marble on it. It had been quite a few years before, since we had, that had been done. Again, we went through Garland. They uh, contracted out and, and got a local contractor to come in and uh, pressure wash and clean uh, the marble. It... Um, Turned out really well. 
Um, I believe I have a before and after photos here. Um, so you can see the difference. Um, it's something that really needed to be done. Uh, this one again came in uh, on time and under budget. It was original budget was two hundred seventy-five thousand seven hundred forty-eight dollars. Uh, the actual cost was one hundred thirty-six thousand two hundred two dollars. So that one came in quite a bit under budget, actually. Um, while they were pressure washing it, they uh, inspected all these the joints and ended up replacing or resealing uh, some of the joints that were rotted and, and deteriorating. Uh, so the, the marble in the courthouse now is in good shape. It, everything looks good. The marble, they were hanging good. Um, so we're, we're very happy with this. And Moving on to the next one, we have his place, which you guys mentioned a little earlier. Uh, his place was uh, a property in Woodburn that we found. Uh, the health department wanted to put together a program for uh, called his place it's uh, basically uh, going off of uh, her place that they already have um, this property turned out perfect for what we needed um, everything the sales was uh, not as easy as what we would like it took longer than what we would like but we did get it through <clears throat> um, so now uh, we're doing some planning uh, and hopefully the health department will be able to move uh, their clients in their uh, September to October time frame. Great. So that is, was the ma majority of our projects that we had. Um, I did want to list uh, just a few uh, smaller projects that didn't come on in under the $100,000 $100, uh, frame. So we also did a kiosk for the courthouse for the reception, a courthouse square for the reception area here on the first floor. It's for information, uh, guidance, uh, just reception type thing. Make people feel welcome. Uh, we replaced... Uh, portion of sidewalk out at the jail that was a tripping hazard. Um, that one went really well, very easily. Uh, we installed a security fence for uh, a jail impound lot so that the sheriff department could uh, store their vehicles that are impounded. And then we replaced uh, de boilers at the juvenile detention center that were uh, original from 2003, 2005, excuse me. So those are some other ones that we've done this year, um, along with even some more, but those are the majority. Any questions? Any questions? No, just thank you, Terry, and coming <coughs> for your team and the, the great work that you continue to do to support the citizens as well as the employees uh, of Marion County. Thank you. Thank you. Echo that. You guys have done a lot of work over the last couple of years. Yeah. yeah a really good place. Mr. Chair, I'll move that we accept the final closeout report for the following projects. The Marion County Jail Pavement and Filtration Project, the Marion County Jail Administration and Visitation Fire Sprinkler Installation Project, the Marion County Jail F and G Roof Replacement Projects, the Marion County Courthouse Marble Cleaning Project, and the purchase of his place in the city of Woodburn. Uh, and a job well done to Terry and Team. And I'll second the motion. We have a motion to second. Any further discussion? Seeing all those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Well, that was a passes. thumbs up. Thank you very much. Thank you, Terry. Thank, Thank you, you Colleen. All right. And then finally, we have Commander Jeff Stuttridge. Good morning, Commissioners. 
I am uh, Jeff Stutterd with the Sheriff's Office, the Enforcement Commander. I'm here today to talk about or ask the boards uh, to appr consider approval for uh, uh, intergovernmental, intergovernmental agreement with the City of Sublimity. Um, this is a ongoing contract that we have with the City of Sublimity for police services. Uh, I was here last week, talked about two other ones. Um, Deputy Tom Barber is assigned there. This contract is, I was just trying to remember how long, it's been close to eight to 10 years that we've had this contract. Um, and, you know, it provides the deputy the ability to integrate into the community, figure out what the, the community concerns are, the challenges, and then just connect with the, the community members, the city council, the mayor, and uh, work to address those those individual community needs. Um, and again, it would just extend the contract um, from July 1st of 2022 through June 30th of 2023. Okay. This is a good contract? You got a good deputy there in Sublimity? Absolutely. So I'll get yeah. any questions. They were talking about it yesterday at breakfast. Right. Yeah. I don't. I'll move, uh, Mr. Chair, if you're ready, and move approval of an incoming funds in or government agreement with the City of Sublimity in the amount of $212,434 to provide law enforcement services within the city from July 1st, 22 to June 30th, 23. And I'll second the motion. Do a motion to second. Is there any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Motion passes. Thank you, Commander. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. I'll read the calendar while you start signing because we're going to try to get over there to that groundbreaking. Uh, Mr. Chair, uh, the calendar for this week. Uh, today we're here in the board session. Tomorrow on Thursday at 8 a.m., Salem, Marion County, Sassy Onion. Uh, it's our monthly breakfast with them at 8 o'clock. Uh, Thursday at 9.30, work session, mental health in the San Am Canyon. Here on the fifth floor in Commissioner's Boardroom. Tomorrow at noon, the Epping Homestead Boys and Girls Branch follow-up luncheon. Uh, well, I'm at Heritage Spinning Room uh, at noon, and then tomorrow at 1.30, work session and water discussion location, Commissioner's Boardroom here on the fifth floor. Friday, 10 a.m., United States Army Corps of Engineers, North San Am Facilities Tour, Detroit Dam at 10 o'clock. That'll be fun. Get your, get your boots on, I'm Looking telling you. And don't take the elevator. I dare you. Okay, and then at uh, Tuesday, the 621, I think we have a holiday on the, the 20th. Um, and then on 621, management update, uh, commissioner's boardroom here on the fifth floor. Tuesday, uh, the 21st at noon, Marion County Public Safety Coordinating Council executive meeting in the commissioner's boardroom on the fifth floor. Tuesday, uh, the 21st, San A.M. Hospital Emergency Services, expansion and support. Uh, at the San Am Hospital at 1401 North 10th Avenue, Staten, and Tuesday 621 uh, at 230 service districts adopt a budget and second semi-annual meeting uh, for Brooks, Fargo, Labish, and Illahi uh, service districts here in the fifth floor in the commissioner's boardroom. Uh, Wednesday uh, the 22nd, we're back here at 9 o'clock. Wednesday the 22nd at 1.30, a BOC CAO meeting here on the commissioner's boardroom on the fifth floor and Wednesday at three o'clock Marion County Extension and 4-H Service District budget adoption here on the fifth floor in the commissioner's boardroom. All right. <clears throat> Got a full plate. Is, it Is there anything else before we adjourn this meeting? Not for me. We oh, we're going to go over to the groundbreaking of the uh, new veterans uh, home facility, right? Uh, over on Winter and um, was that Winter and Court Street? That's right. So that's where we're going to head right that's from where we're here. Head right now. That's where we're going to Project rush to that's been long coming. Thank you to uh, all the people at the Y, as well as uh, Senator uh, Peter Courtney, uh, really helped over the years getting some money for that to be built. So it'll be a be really a nice thing. project for our vets. Yeah. Wonderful. Okay. With that, we're adjourned.